Okay. All right. So uh, I'm here with Bart Schulteson. And yeah. uh, thank you for being on this interview. I appreciate it. Likewise. Thank you for having me. Yeah, man, of course. And um, so just a little introduction about Bart here. Um, Bart. Uh, Bart and I met at the instructor's course for the Wim Hof Academy. Bart is an instructor trainer, so he was there training me when I was getting my master's certification. Those who don't yep. know who Wim Hof is, definitely check him out. Um, he's making big changes in health and wellness, but also mindset. And uh, it, it's extremely impactful for everybody's life that I've ever introduced it to. And so yep. Bart has a PhD in neuropsychology. and um, like I mentioned, he's an instructor, but you're also into uh, lifestyle hacking. You're an outdoor lover, a nature lover. Um, and one of the things that I loved about what you know, yeah. your bio says is that you're kind of bridging the gap between um, evidence-based and experience-based. And, and yeah. this is one of the things that I really want to talk to you about because there's so many people and they're just all about science, science, science. And I live in a world that's results based and science plays a big role in what I do, but it doesn't always apply in the real world. Yeah. And so, um, you have to use like foundational principles, but then at the same time kind of manipulate those variables to make it work in reality. And so, um, yeah. that's kind of what I'm interested to talk to you about and, and just get into your story about you were, you were working, as a neuroscientist, correct? And then you got some type of burnout going on. And then tell me the story, tell me the background of how you got into the Wim Hof method. Yeah, well, that's actually uh, not, not all that complex. Uh, I was indeed, there's this, I had my PG, I got my PG in 2005, working in science as a neuropsychologist, neuroscientist. Um, doing research into Parkinson's disease, um, uh, both in, 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 in the human situation and um, uh, ba basic neuroscience, so animal experiments. Um, that was my life, my reality at that time and point. Um, um, and, and I thought that that was the reality because um, my entire system was that world. Uh, I didn't know that there were other things. Um, right. And, and well, I kept, just kept on working in that, in that field, uh, kept on training the new psychologists, uh, doing research, um, reading scientific literature, because that's what you do when you're in science. Um, and and uh, yeah, at a certain time and point, um, I just sort of, you know, um, in this high intensity world where you are juggling all kinds of balls, keeping all kinds of balls up in the air, I started losing balls and I started losing control over the situation I was in. And at first it's, it's okay. You let just let go of one, one or two balls and then you just keep on juggling, keep on playing. Um, but at a certain time point, I wasn't able to do that anymore. Um, I was, I, I would just get in my car in the morning, uh, go off to work, um, sit in, uh, sit behind my, my laptop and sort of, get out of there again at the end of the day not having done very much and then feeling guilty about that um so i couldn't really uh yeah keep on going keep on doing things that, that i thought i loved to do um and uh, at a certain time and point my body just pulled the emergency brake and um i got sick physically and um so it was uh, I, yeah it sort of hit me it hit me really hard twice in one week um, and yeah, I thought, okay, this is strange because usually I don't get sick. I might, you know, I've got four kids and I might get a cold every now and then. Um, but sick, sick, like I don't know what to do. And, uh, and then also like the mental breakdown I had, uh, which I tried to hide, uh, which I did my best for to hide for the entire world. Um, yeah, that sort of got me thinking like, this isn't normal. Something's happening here. Um, and, and, um, well, then I went to the physician of the company, I would, the university I was working for. I told him my story and he said, well, Bob, we have a name for this. This is called a burnout. And it's good that you're here now and not two, mo two months down the road because you might not have entered at that time and point anymore. Uh, and I was like, whoa, what's this? Um, no, this cannot be true. Um, not happening to me. I've been trained to, uh, you know, to, to observe behavior and, uh, um, and, and, and see the signs. I didn't. Um, so now I'm an even bigger failure because I didn't see my own signs. Um, and I, I just don't have time for this, you know, because, because we have goals, targets, deadlines, things to do. And 
mails to answer, uh, important stuff to do. And, and he said, well, that's not your problem anymore. Uh, you're going to slow down now and uh, you're going you're gonna, to, you know, just take your time uh, to get back into the balanced situation that you're supposed to be in. Right. Uh, and then I was like, okay, shit. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, excuse the words. Uh, in, in Holland, we're used to swearing a lot. I don't know. In the States, at the... <laughs> people are offended. That's, that's their problem. Okay, cool. So, yeah, I, and I was like, okay, now something really needs to change. And I need to go speak to my boss and tell him that I'm not feeling well, that, that, that I'm, yeah, that I've got this thing they call a burnout. And that's where I met a number of my fears, uh, speaking in public, for instance, uh, uh, saying no, um, saying, that, okay, this is, this is the limit and I can't go any further now. Um, yeah, and that got me on this interesting journey uh, from, from a PhD in neuroscience. Um, towards uh, reinventing myself and because um, that that was all that was left L life went on um, the goals and the targets and deadlines they were still there uh, they just I got lifted um, fr from that so I didn't need to work I worked 50 at 50 percent rate approximately for half a year right. uh, which in science is not really 50 percent but uh, like 70 75 or something I guess yeah. Um, but life at home went on. Um, you know, kids want your attention. Uh, things need to be need to be done, and I was just trying to hide the the the, the darkness I was going through. Yeah. Um, and and at that time and point, I was uh, I was spending a lot of time um, walking. I I, I I reinvented walking for myself again. Um, uh, I got. I got a coach, somebody who guided me through this process. I'm, I'm forever grateful for that, uh, for that uh, advice that my former boss gave me. Mm -hmm. um, and I was at, at one time and point, I was, I was watching YouTube movies, um, just uh, procrastinating. And, and I saw this movie of a guy uh, with a beard swimming past some icebergs and I thought, what's this 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 can be true i guess that a lot of people that know wim saw this this short uh, video uh, where he's swimming in, in iceland i think wow. uh, and it sort of hit me i thought whoa this is interesting this cannot be true i checked him out i didn't know that it was wim i checked him out uh appeared to be wim hof the Iceman. i thought i still thought he was crazy and just just to stop you had probably heard of him because, uh, just a little background, you guys are from the same country, so you probably had heard of him, right? I had never heard of him before. Okay. No. Uh, and yes, we're from the same country. We were even born uh, uh, geographically 20 minutes from each other, so he was born 20 minutes down the road, right. um, but I had never heard of him. So I was Googling him, and at, at that time, I found out, oh, this is Wim Hof. And uh, and, and so this was back in 2012, 2013. He right. wasn't as well known at that time and point um, and then I started reading about who is he what is he doing and why is he saying this why is he swimming in ice cold water yeah and the rest is history so so basically a, a couple things I want to touch on there do you think that your soul was not being not doing what it was calling for and that's what caused some of the sickness or what what do you think was the the, the reason that you were feeling that and caused you to like uh, move on to something else. Yeah, um, my my old cognitive uh, part of the brain uh, would would say something else, but I, I can feel this now. It's it's so the more the energy part is like yes, I think I I think that that part the the scientific part that being in science uh, scientific in the academy was my life for a large part of my life, and I was happy doing that. But in the end, um, I sort of um, evolved and, and found my body already knew that that wasn't the place that I should be in, um, which to me cognitively wasn't clear at that time and point, uh, that that insight only came later, uh, that, that, um, cause I just, I thought, you know, this is what I'm trained to do. So I should do this. Um, and I can do it because uh, the grades were good and the evaluations were always good. Students liked me and I liked what I was doing. Yeah. I thought, but still, something was missing. So I went on this soul searching. Who am I? Why am I here? And what's, what am I supposed to do? Now, here's a question for you that I, this is stuff just based on what I've read. I don't even know if this is really 100% scientific, what I'm about to say, although I have read some science on this. Like People who are in the science field 
and they're in school, there's a lot of left brain activity going on. Would you say that's correct? Like it's more driven to the left brain? Yeah, I'm, I'm personally not a big fan of like left brain, right brain. And I know that, that you know, these are like um, things that are being said, but to me, this thing, this brain that's inside of you, that's one big network uh, and there is uh, cross action and everything going on. Um, but yes, uh, if you follow the classical view, uh, yeah, I was left brained, although I'm actually more right brained. Um, so more right brain dominant, maybe uh -huh. even both. So I was only paying attention to one side. If you, if you would want to make it black and white, I was paying attention to one side of my being and not to the other side. And yeah, that, that was creating this balance in essence. So at some time and point, your body can have only have so much disbalance and then it will give you a signal and a lot of signals. Um, and in the end, I needed to sort of combine those things to create something that works for me. And, and well, that's what I'm doing now. Awesome. So, yeah, that was I guess that was kind of the question. That in, and yeah, le left brain, right brain, you're probably focused more when you talk about the brain because you've known so much and you study so much. You probably talk about all like uh, the, the cingulate gyrate or whatever, you know, like the amygdala and like specific yeah. parts of the brain that are being activated, right? Yeah. So, but in essence, there was an imbalance. Maybe it was too yeah. much focus on like academia when there were, you were missing this part. So yeah. um, is that where you think the Wim Hof method kind of brought in that part, that balance? Or how did you get, what, what was the experience you had that was like, uh -huh. I know we spoke a little bit about this yeah. Poland, but I'd like you to share your experience there. Yeah, so when I was a student, like, like you were uh, in, in the academy, um, uh, I was in this time and point that I sort of found out there is no such thing as coincidence. Um, uh, we, we live on this, this living organism called Earth. Um, um, everything is connected, everything is looking for balance. Uh, and, and things don't happen without a reason. Um, and me finding Wim and uh, actually our paths sort of crossed because I'm coming from evidence-based going to experience-based and he's coming from experience-based going to evidence-based. So at some time and point we crossed and I guess that's sort of where we met. Um, and the method is, uh, it's, it's, not, it's not easy, but it's so simple. Mm -hmm. Breathing, mindset, cold nature expo uh, exposure um, connection um, that it, it, it just it hit me um, it hit me harder than anything had hit me in the years before um, due to its uh, uh, its its simplicity um, it's it, the elegance of the simplicity is there and it's it's just like a good Italian dish you have three ingredients and you create magic on a plate mm -hmm. and, and 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 Wim's method combining things that have always been present breathing mindset cold nature um combining those things into something which is more than the sum of the things um just hit me and and, and i was intrigued puzzled um i was um yeah i was fighting with with the cold uh, part of it uh, i i could i could you know do something with with the mindset yeah I, you know been trained to do that la 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 and that that's that's all fine yeah. breathing was unfamiliar to me i've been um breathing wrong for a large part of my life uh, so that hit me immediately i felt that i felt something changing in my body uh, and it was i was fighting the cold uh, for uh, for a number of days when i started taking cold showers um, and 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 then after I think day five or six of cold showers I, I exited the shower warm and that's when it really hit me I thought okay what's this I just I've just been in a cold shower in January where water is really cold yeah. I come out I'm warm yeah. this is cool so yeah let me let me just start by saying uh, real quick I live in South Carolina and cold showers in South Carolina are not cold showers where you are. Like I, I went from a Wim Hof retreat to Denmark, a Wim Hof retreat in Spain, yeah, Denmark. And I took a cold shower in Denmark in the summer and it was colder than the ice baths that we were in. 
So when people are listening to this, they're not talking about like some random cold shower. Like in the Netherlands, that it's like almost freezing, right? It's 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 cold. Yeah. In, in winter time, uh, I think cold water here will be around five degrees Celsius. I, I don't know how much that's in Fahrenheit, but about forty. Yeah. Yeah. Something. So that's fresh. Yeah. So you it, got it can get colder. The sixth day you did it, you came out and your body was warm. Yeah. And looking back, I think I stopped fighting the cold because a lot of things we, we do in this Western society um, when, uh, when we meet stress is we fight because that is what we've learned to do, you know, fight. Um, and I think I just, I just accepted the fact that it was cold. Yeah. So accepted the stressor at hand and then my body, I, I let my body do what it's supposed to do, warm up. And it did. So yeah, it's it's beautiful. This beautiful biological mechanism that's there um, that hasn't evolved out. So it stimulated essentially like this innate uh, system. Yeah. Are you resistance? You know, I say a lot of times like resisting whatever you're resisting just creates more pain. Yeah. And there's something that I heard when I first met with Wim when he said to this lady, he wasn't even like, she came with her daughter that wanted to go on a retreat and she had no idea what she was getting involved with. She like yeah. showed up on this retreat and like, oh yeah, we're getting in the ice bath. And she's like, what? And so she's in the ice bath like, Ugh. and Wim goes, you have to die, die, right? And so that hit me, it was like, wow, that's, he's talking about essentially ego death yeah. or acceptance it's like you have to let go and yeah. once you let go the magic happens in the ice yeah. bath. and that's what happened to you and it took yeah. those like steps to get there so can you just explain a little bit about what is happening in the brain because people have profound impacts when they get into the ice bath and they'll say like uh, they get into a meditative state or what whatever occurs is there um I know there's studies being done on that, but what would you say in terms of the neuroscience that's actually happening when people are getting in the ice bath? Yeah, well, there's still a lot of studies go ongoing and there is still a lot that we don't know yet. I think there is more we don't know than we, that what we do know. Yeah. Um, but to me, um, putting it really simply is that um, uh, your, your brain is, is a pattern machine. Uh, your brain uh, uses up a lot of energy to process stuff. Um, so if your brain can produce patterns which are less energy consuming than novelty uh, things, uh, then your brain will choose for that um, to just keep things going with the least amount of effort possible. Like um, resistance. Yeah, path of least resistance, but you're never going to learn anything new there. Um, and, and so when you step into an ice bath or in a cold environment, um, the first thing you've, you, 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 that will probably happen is the fact that you have been learned uh, in this Western society that cold is not okay. Mm -hmm. that, uh, so the pattern that, that is there is that cold is dangerous. Mm -hmm. You're going to die. You're going to freeze. You're going to turn into a living popsicle or whatever. Right. Uh, and those emotional uh, aspects uh, of the memory um, which has been imprinted uh, regarding cold exposure will uh, sort of turn, all, uh, turn on all the alarm signals uh, in your brain and you want to get out. Um, if you find the opportunity or the peace of mind already that you don't get out, then you might still go into fight-flight mode, maybe even freeze mode, because you're fight, cause, and, and you will fight the stressor at hand. Because that's also what we've been taught. If there is stress, fight. Because you, you might be able to win. But uh, personally, and also in, in the studies that Wim did, like what we're showing is that the competition is useless. Because um, you, you, can, you can't fight nature. We're an integral part of nature, and you will never win. Um, the ice is always going to be colder. Um, so, so there is no use in fighting. Uh, and so you need to leave that pattern behind that you will win by fighting by uh, by creating forced balance uh, which is no form of balance to me and just accept what is present and then overrule those old patterns and let go of ego so to say because ego is like yeah we're gonna win we're gonna do this come on yep. if you let go and just accept what is whatever stressor it is in this case cold water or, or ice water and uh, then you can be and you can you can leave the brain check in with your system again, All right. and your body knows what to do. 
create balance, create heat if there is cold. And it knows to do that because it's it, we have been doing that for for decades. Um, so, so that was what was happening. And if you then if you then learn, so you're learning something new. You're leaving your comfort zone of warm fluffiness, right. uh, and you're going into this cold, stressful environment, opening up to learning something new. And then you will have this new uh, pattern that you can use every next time you meet a, a stressor which might be cold or something else because your body always reacts in approximately the same way to stress. And you can use everything you learn in that ice bath in other stressful situations. So and that helped me a lot. Yeah. I, I mean, that's one of the most profound things. Like when people ask like, what's the benefit? I mean, there's the benefits are endless. I mean, like there are some guys there's, I can't remember his name, the Russian guy that says like, you know, it helps kill cancer and helps the cardiovascular system and it helps like, uh, dopamine regulation, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, for me, it was the stress outside of the ice bath no longer became as stressful because you're yeah. taking up those patterns and all of a sudden um, you're encountering stress and it's like, oh, that's yeah. not you to deal with than before. Um, but would you say the people with the biggest egos have the hardest time in the ice bath yeah, yeah, I see, I see, I see that happening a lot. Um, that that people, um, and and people with uh, with emotional um, unprocessed emotional um, uh, things, for instance, also have a lot of can can meet a lot of difficulties in the ice bath. Uh, but uh, but coming back to the um, like like the alpha type of guys and girls, um, yeah, they they sort of. Uh, and one of my first workshops, nice anecdote. One of my first workshops, a friend of mine came. He's a, he's a school guy, you know. I, I'm I, a bit of bit of ego there, um, and he said, yeah, I want to go in and. I want to go, uh, you know, uh, underwater uh, completely. And I said to him, well, you might not want to do that because it'll be cold. And he, I, I can handle that. I can handle that. And he went in and he, he ejected out of there in, in, in milliseconds again. Um, so, yeah, there, there might be a thing to, um, to lo lots of ego in, in the system um, uh, working uh, to make it more difficult to, um, uh, go, yeah, to, to go into an ice bath and to be with the situation because the ego is working on, uh, on you so hard. Now, I, I know there's probably, I don't think there are any studies on this, but what's your thought process about what is happening? So the person who has this maybe identity that they're tough, and that they're going to win, they get in the ice bath, and then alarm bells are going off, the brain's saying you're gonna die, and they can't overcome it, because I've seen people like get in the ice bath and jump out, and they just like, no, I'm done. Yeah. And then they're yeah. able to get in, and maybe the second time is a little bit better. But yeah. what's, is there an explanation about what's going on there? Hmm, besides, yeah. Besides what you already said, basically. Yeah, I, th I think I think this this sort of sums up what I, what what I just was talking about. Um, I, I think the patterns that are there, the ego that's saying I can fight this, I, I I'm I'm better than this. The uh, dopamine the testosterone levels are so high. Um, uh, yeah, you know I, I'm better than this. I can fight this, and and then uh, you need to let go of that and that to people. Are, who are really high in that fight flight mode all the time it's it's more difficult to let go than people who are somewhat lower in that in that uh, in that system uh, so if you're in, if you're always like going on your sympathetic uh, in, uh, part of the nervous system and and that's you because that, that has become your normal uh, then it's more difficult to tone down again to de-escalate and to to find that um, yeah that they're actually capable of doing that creating that balance again uh, without the necessity of being in that hyperactive, uh, ego-driven, sympathetic part. Yeah, the next thing I, I wanted to get into, which is directly connected with what you're talking about, nature. Is, yeah. I know you're a nature lover, right? I am too. Um, as you might have seen, I, you know, I'm always going off into the middle of nowhere. But um, so what happens to the brain i don't know if you've studied this because i know this is not in your area but this is something that i think interests you right it's like when we're in nature when we're exposed to these these uh parts of nature the changes that can happen to the neurology right have you read in this or do you know uh, what's happening there 
Well, I read some stuff about it, um, but uh, also fit, like more physiological. When when you when you walk bare feet uh, in in nature, uh, what happens is that negative ions from your system get uh, fr from the earth uh, are, uh, are being taken up by your system, and that that may reassures not that ensures that. Uh, your heart, your, your cardiovascular system, breathing, immune system, it all functions, it go, works better. Uh, so actually what I think is happening, uh, not only on the brain level, but also like in your entire system, is that you're rebalancing again. You're connecting with the nature that you are part of. And, and the thing, you know, I can wear a nice shirt and I can be in, in all these uh, uh, houses and cubicles and stuff, um, but actually, this is this is nature and, and the nature outside is something that we are a part of but what we have done over the like in in the um, uh, cognitive revolution industrial revolution where um, um, whatever kind of revolution or evolution that we've been in as a human species is create further distance between our nature and the nature outside which in essence is one thing to me um I didn't think that when I was still in science uh, 15 years ago, but uh, <laughs> to me, this insight came a few years ago. Um, and, and Wim helped a lot in that. Um, so the more we are able to connect again, our nature with nature outside, the more balanced we are and the more, um, yeah, the, the more uh, at ease we, we can become. Um, Shinrin-yoku in, in Japan, you know, forest bathing is, is since, since the 80s there, it's, it's a form of therapy which is widely accepted and, and normal. But here in the Western society, it's, only be, it's, it's new and it's becoming more well-known now. But so, so going out into nature creates balance. And, and so getting, and it makes you connect because connection works two sides. Connection should work inside first and then outside. We can connect with each other if the connection inside is good. And that connection inwards will work better if you're connected with nature. That, that's, that's my vision on things. Yeah, so you're bringing it back to the connection and reconnecting with yourself as yeah. you connect with nature. And it's interesting you talk about negative ions because it brings me back to one place where there's a high concentration of negative ions, I found out, is in waterfalls. And this is why people love waterfalls. And when we went to Poland, for people listening, when we do the instructor's course, yeah. we were in the waterfall and people say, oh, this, this uh, waterfall has healing powers. Yeah. And the healing, part of it, I believe, is coming from that pure energy, but the negative ions. And uh, um, I have to tell people that you made us stay in the in the uh, waterfall water for about 10 minutes. And so this is part of instructor training. 10 minutes, we come out, it's 30 degrees out, which is almost zero degrees Celsius. Yeah. And, uh, and then we have to warm up ourselves using yeah. our mind and our body. And so um, most people will listen to that and they don't think it's possible. Yeah. Right? So, can you just explain what's happening there and how that's possible? So let me just repeat what happened. So in part of the instructor training, we go into a waterfall. We're all in together. Uh, we're using our mind. We're using the Wim Hof method. We're using the technique. We have to show that we're able to use it. And we were in yeah. the freezing water for 10 minutes. We come out of the freezing water into 30 degree weather. And then we have to warm ourselves up with our mind and very light movements. And yeah. so what, yeah, what's going on there? How is people able to do that? Most people think that's impossible. Um, what's happening? Yeah, I think the fact that people think that that's impossible is, is, is a nice example of the, the, the limiting beliefs that we have gathered around uh, over the years in, in our brain. Um, and I used to have the same because when I was at, at the edge of my first ice bath, I thought it was going to die when I would enter. Um, and, and, and an ice bath, for the people who have done that, they know is, is, is in Intense, can be intense, but way less intense than being un, uh, in, in freezing, fresh, streaming water uh, somewhere out in nature. That's colder. Um, but still, the body knows what to do. The body knows what to do, but the limiting beliefs in our head are prohibiting the body to do what it's supposed to do. And so what we train you to do is um, to let go of those limiting beliefs. Uh, and that's also why this exercise is part of the instructor training. Um, and it, it's, so it's not about keeping you in there for 10 minutes. Um, 
it, it was less a uh, few it was around seven minutes or something but it's not about the exact time but it's <laughs> um and, and you could have been in there for longer um uh, well, we, we someone recorded it we watched it approximately eh? <laughs> um so what what happens there is that in this extreme harsh nature that you're in um there is no external heat source um so you can't turn to uh warm i don't know uh, there, there is no sauna there there is no uh, no warm sunshine so you can't turn to external heat source so you need to go inwards mm. to reheat your system knows what to do it, uh, we can go into details like mitochondria uh, bursting in activity. And so extra energy, in essence, extra energy needs to be produced in your system in order to create excess heat to reheat your body slowly and gently. Um, and your, everybody is capable of doing that. It's just the limiting beliefs in our head, the mindset that we've been you know, taught, to, um, taught to listen to is dysfunctional. Is keeping us in this disbalanced situation so what happens in the in this exercise is that you go in you come out you can't talk you can't go running or jumping or or, uh, or, or warming yourself with clothing no you just need to go in and you need to go looking for whatever uh, whatever for wherever that heat is because it's there um, and when we did that exercise, when I was a student, um, the outside temperatures was about minus 15 degrees wow. uh, Celsius. So that's below 30 in Fahrenheit. Eh? Yeah. Um, so that was cold, cold. So the water was cold. We came out and there was this, it was like this Kung Fu movie uh, setting. Nobody was talking. Nobody was moving. Everybody put their shoes back on because otherwise your, your feet, due to the humidity, would freeze through the snow. Um, so shoes back on and everybody was just standing there, horse stands or no horse stands, but standing there, breathing, going inwards, mindset, focusing, and everybody reheated again. Mm. And that, that's where... If there was some ego left in people, that's where they left that ego because that ego is keeping you from going in, making that connection. Yeah, and and it's 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 a hard exercise, but it's a very valuable and wonderful exercise. So, um, so they have to use the mindset. But what triggers in the body? There was a study I think done on whims like intercostals. Right? Yeah, basically, they're hyper active, or they start firing to heat yeah. up. The blood and the blood. The yeah, so the, so the intercostal muscles, so the muscles between your ribs, this, this done, study was done uh, last year in Michigan. Um, so at first, uh, the big news was like brown fat, brown fat activation. Everybody has white, white fat, brown fat, and brown fat activation was, was uh, shown to be higher uh, in WIM or people working outside, for instance, like in Scandinavia, a lot of people do outside work, tree logging, and, and if they're out in wintertime, they have more brown fat. And this brown fat has, is brown because it contains more energy-producing cells uh, energy producing um, uh, bodies per cell so and and these these things the mitochondria they're they're a bit brownish and that's why brown fat is called brown fat mm -hmm. they can um, they can turn around the the white fat into energy better than other cells in your body um, so that was found first and so we do brown fat activation um, uh, movements activities to increase the heat and last year in the Michigan study um, uh, they found that intercostal muscles um, were also part of this reheating, uh, reheating system of your body. There are a lot of capillaries in your intercostal muscles. And when you tense those muscles, um, the, so energy needs to go there. So oxygen needs to go, go there to, make that en to release that energy. And the capillaries that go through there just spread out that warmth that is being produced there throughout your system. So the blood gets basically pumped it's getting the blood's getting warmed up and it's getting pumped throughout the body. It's kind of like yeah, up, yeah, up the yeah. Because when you're in a cold environment, the first thing which will happen is that your body goes into this survival mode, um, where it, it it's uh, it checks okay what systems do do uh, do we need, and the the further away so you've got your core, so your brain and and, and your core, and but the further away from from uh, like in the picture on, on in your background, so when you go into your extremities. You've got 10 fingers, you know, you, you can lose a finger 
and you can still survive. You can even lose two or maybe a hand because you have this other hand which you can use. Yeah. Same goes for your toes. Uh, you can lose an arm uh, and, and you can still survive. You've got only one heart and one brain, two sides, but one brain. So your system needs to keep this core warm so it will shut off uh, all the, uh, the heat production or the heat distribution to your extremities. Uh, and then when you come out of this cold situation again, or you're in this cold situation for a long period of time, you need to, your system needs to stay alive. So you need to spread some of the heat to the extremities because you still need them to survive in this extremely stressful situation. Is that, and that's why the intercostals come in. Okay, you know what was interesting is when I first worked with Wim in, uh, in Spain, we did uh, 15 minutes in the, in the water. Yeah. Um, it was the first time I ever done, I had done 15 minutes. And then we did a canyoning walk up the mountain. Yeah. And I remember we got to a spot where people were jumping off the cliffs and Wim was sitting there and I saw um, I, what I thought was shivering, right? Yeah. Like seeing this, uh, things like twitching and all this stuff. And, uh, and then it, hit me later on like his intercostals were just like firing nonstop, and he wasn't shivering his body was just heating up and heating up so um yeah the body is is pretty amazing uh, the question i was going to ask <laughs> is, is, is really like whim it, this is why i'm so passionate about it because when i see people who push the limits and um uh, something like someone like whim um it elevates everybody else around them. And then when you meet with these people, like we do in the instructor course, yeah. uh, it just brings it to another, another level of like yeah. uh, pushing it outside, connection, mindset. Um, but would you say um, that that's the reason why people during, for example, I've experienced mild hypothermia where I actually blacked out. Mm -hmm. Is that happening because of the same thing you're talking about? Like the blood, basically the brain starts kind of shutting down and your organs are trying to save itself? Uh, yeah, that, that's the definition of, that's, that's part of the definition of hypothermia. That, that uh, your system just needs, um, uh, needs yeah, it wants to stay alive. And, and, uh, and when the temperature, uh, so the, the ambient temperature gets down so much, um, or you're in that period that, that you're in a prolonged period of time in cold environment, then your body wants to stay alive. And, and consciousness is also taking up a lot of energy. Um, so wow. that's right. Yeah. Uh, to, to, you know, this talk that we're doing is taking up energy. Our brains need to right. work to, in order to communicate. Uh, and if your system uh, says, well, no, we need to shut that down a bit, um, then you might get these this, in these states of confusion, which are also uh, the symptoms of, of hypothermia, uh, mild hypothermia uh, arising. Um, I also had that once uh, when I was in, uh, in an exercise in Poland and um, I, thought I, was, I thought I was fine until one of the instructors came up and asked me a question. And, and then I, I noticed that my thinking was a bit slower. I wanted to say something and my speaking and thinking, I, I, yeah, I consciously noticed it, it's slower. I thought, ah, okay, so now it's getting colder here this is my time to quit. Now I need to get out and reheat again. Yeah. Um, so if you're aware of the signals, this, 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 this entire biochemical factory is sending you, uh, you can listen uh, sooner, <laughs> uh, rather sooner than later, and always stay in the safe side and know when to bail out uh, instead of keep going uh, ego-wise. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've heard Wim say, you know, I'm crazy but not stupid, and that's yeah. really what has, keep, has kept them alive. So awesome, let's talk about what you're doing. So I know um, you're not only doing the Wim Hof stuff, but you're, you're teaching people mindset, um, you started yeah. your own business, and how have you parlayed what you've been doing with the neuroscience, the Wim Hof, into what you're doing now? Yeah, so this is like this, this sort of transitional phase. Um, I was fully in neuroscience uh, up until 2015, uh, approximately. I, well, not, not fully. I started my company um, coming out of my burnout because uh, I got this opportunity to reinvent myself. I found out that this new scientific part of my life was interesting, but there is more. <laughs> uh, I was only operating on this part of the spectrum while there is a lot more. Yeah. And I was finding, finding that out. 
Uh, so I thought I need to do something. I need to change uh, something to 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 be alive now to live. Uh, you know, this is this is a one shot opportunity. Uh, it's it's uh, there is a beginning and end, and in in between there is life. And and I want to live now. Uh, yeah. So I need to do something else and not go back into the dogmas and the expectation patterns that I was living in. I wasn't living my own life, so I needed to do something. Uh, and that's why when I decided to start my own company, because um, um, Nicole, the co Coach, uh, who, who coached me through my burnout, uh, uh, finding myself again. Um, she was helping me be me again, and um, and I, I was so amazed by this. Uh, cognitively, I could sort of um, check and know everything that she was doing with me, but still it worked. So yeah. something else was happening, yeah. and then I decided, okay, but you're really helping people, and I've maybe I've also been helping people uh, as a new psychologist, but this is actually doing, you're doing real shit now. And I want to do that. So, um, and then she said, well, start your own company. Uh, so, so then I started going into my own company next to the scientific work I was still doing yeah. and, and doing individual so personal development, team development, um, helping people find themselves again. That's also when I, sort of came up with my, my, uh, my back to your nature um, uh, tagline, uh, so to say, because yeah, everything I do is bring people back to their nature. So I take people out into nature to get them back to their nature. And, and life, is, life is all about it. You know, there are ups, ups and downs in life, um, but, but then, uh, then I take people on this path into nature, into the mountains, into nature, to get them back to their heart. And, and so, so that, that's, that's what I do. And, I, and to me, that, that all revolves around mindset. Because um, mindset, uh, and that's also because I reposted the Bruce Lipton uh, video that you posted like yesterday or the day before. And yeah. he also says, um, like, yeah, you know, the thing you can influence is mindset. Because mm -hmm. uh, your mindset creates your reality. Yeah. And... I wasn't aware of that when I was still in neuroscience. My mindset was fixed, closed, uh, goals, targets, deadlines. And now I sort of opened up my mindset to, you know, whatever is coming and, and, and be open to new experiences and learning and, and, and bring, bring people on that path uh, of self-development, self-empowerment, so that they can, they can do the same. Because I think everybody can do the same. Now, that's, that, that's crazy interesting because, one, you were so cerebral. Yeah. And uh, just like everything was cognitive, right? So it was all about the mind, all about the mind. Now you're bringing it into the heart. And you're using yeah. the mind to bring it into the heart. Yeah. And so I've heard people say mindset, and now I've heard that people say heart set. You know, it's, there was uh, thousands of years ago when I guess scientists believed that the heart was like the brain. Hmm. And so now we're starting to like bring it into a uh, connection. I don't know if you ever heard of heart math. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah. So uh, have you studied some of the stuff that when you're in harmony, the wavelengths and the connection from your brain to your heart are in, uh, you know, a perfect wavelength? Yeah. I, th I think that, that uh, this Western society sees these two things as separate things. Yeah. And uh, physically, you can, you can get your heart out and you can get your brain out, but I think that they are all parts of one thing. Right. And, and, that, um, and that this, like, like your, your, your heart and your gut, that, that's a brain, uh, but this is also a brain. And in essence, this is your central line. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's one, to me, it's one thing. So if you're in connection, if there is flow or good vibes, like, uh, like Bruce Lipton says, um, yeah. Uh, it's it's not only interpersonal but also intrapersonal. So if this is aligned, this is aligned more easy. And the other way, around, it's yeah, you know, there is it's one thing. And I'm doing my best to explain it to you, and you fully understand this. But I know that a lot of people might be watching that think, hmm, what's that? Yeah, um, but yeah, that's the connection, right? So if yeah. you're if you're out of your heart and you're only in your brain, then you're like you mentioned, you're out of balance. And so when yeah. you're back to nature, we're rebalancing. Yes. So, um, yeah, do you think that's a problem in science? Because, uh, like you explained, it's just like blinders on and there's no yeah. kind of open to other ideas. Like, is that a person yeah. you would do your coaching with? Uh, come again, last, last part of the question. Is that, like, because you were there, 
is that a person that you can help? Have you helped that type of person? Like a scientist yes. who is like just too cognitive, too yeah. mindset centered. Can yeah. you tell a little bit about like how you go about doing that? Yeah, I think, um, well, I take them into nature to get them back to their nature. It's as easy yeah. as that. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah. so I don't have an office, the forest and, and, and uh, the countryside, that's my office. Um, I, I take people outside and then people are amazed by the effects that being outside has on them uh, without me asking questions. So, uh, and then I just add the, 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 uh, the asking questions and the feeling the energy, so the energy work, um, uh, looking at a person from a holistic perspective, because uh, as, as an entire thing, instead of uh, a head or a body or an arm or something, so this is integral part, uh, being also an integral part of the bigger thing, nature, earth, um and yeah that's so that's how i i do my best to help people um and i think science uh is, is just an ex uh, like a, a very extreme example of the society we live in and uh, in science people only look at things they can see right and what's non-measurable uh, so no zeros or one can be uh, added to it that doesn't exist yeah if you put it really really black and white and I think it's interesting, uh, for instance, if you walk into a forest with somebody and then I ask people, so what do you see? Just, just you know, look around, what do you see? Hmm. Um, and then people will say, if you're lucky, people will say, yeah, I see trees and I see hills and, and valleys, grass, maybe a bird or a squirrel or whatever. But they will never say, I, I see the empty spaces between the trees. Hmm or I see the air or whatever. Um, Cause we are learned this system is trained to look at the things that are visible, yeah. tangible. Yeah. And the interesting thing is that there is something in between those trees, which isn't measurable yet, maybe in a scientific way, but it's there, it's energy. Well, see, that's a question I asked the guy that made this thing. And he said, everything in nature can be, they can measure the frequency. And this is what I was trying, Part of what I'm trying to get to because um, I was literally just watching a video uh, from Tony Robbins and Dean Graziosi and they were saying the most impactful things in our lives are the things that we can't see right like love and anger right yes so those are impacting your lives you can't really see it right uh, we're doing this zoom video you can't see what's actually creating this no. but it's an electric frequency like this machine is a frequency generator and so um, bridging that gap between the scientific world is like what we can only see and yeah. um, what we can't see. So are you doing that when you bring them into nature, like feel like yeah. basically feel the, the energy of nature and bringing yeah. it to the soul or the spirit or whatever it might be? Yeah, yeah I'm doing my best to do that because um, I think that that works. Um, and that's that's what what you started out with when you were introducing me, like um, bridging the gap between experience base and evidence base and and the thing in between, because that's the interesting part. Um, I can I can talk about science and that's interesting and necessary, and I can talk about vague uh, hippie uh, stuff, uh, which to me is not as vague as it used to be. But the thing in between is what people are looking for. Um, the um, the intangible, tangible stuff. Um, and by taking people into nature, uh, helping them with breath work, um, letting them be connected to their own system, their own body again, and by that to nature, letting them take off their shoes and walk on their bare feet, which a lot of people have never done before, because you know you wear shoes, because that's what society dictates, you wear shoes. Uh, and then people take them off and they're like, oh, this hurts on my feet. Say, hey, you're feeling something now. Oh, yeah, I am. And so you raise the awareness of, of all the signals that this body and nature is sending you. And then you can increase connection and increase uh, happiness. And then, as Wim says, uh, help people living a more happy, healthy, and strong life. Enlightenment. Yeah, and the value of that is incredible. Now, yeah. one quick question about the feet. I don't know if you've researched any of that or studied it, but the nerve endings on the feet and the connection to the cognitive aspect and like how even just walking barefoot as a child makes you smarter and because it's like firing all, all these, uh, the nerve endings on your feet, which are triggering parts of the brain. Have you ever looked into that and researched that? Oh, 
No, no, only only uh, by experiencing it firsthand. I haven't I haven't read much about it. Um, I, I know there is a lot of a lot of data there too, but that that's a downside. There is so much knowledge that that you can only choose things that uh, to look into. But I what I feel when I walk uh, when I walk into the forest around back here, I take off my shoes. I feel the connection. I, I feel the energy go through this system. I, I so I and even further because the physical limitations of your body. And not the end of the energy that you're a part of and you can feel that and that might sound vague and spiritual to some people but if you open up to that uh, to that experience and just you know go out there take off those shoes and 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 be open to the experience and you can actually start feeling that um yeah it's awesome. it's not that complicated so kind of bring that full circle this being about healing hacks yeah that is one of your healing hacks you'd say is like going out in nature and reconnecting with the earth and yeah. building that energy up not only with earth also with the air you know the the things that we can't see because can because we can see earth again uh, we, we see the soil we see the bottom that there are feet are standing on but we're constantly surrounded by energy which is in the air outside as well as inside here yeah. and the more you can connect with that the trees, the wind, whatever, um, the more connection you will have and the more peace of mind you will get, the better balance your body will be. So then when, if you meet a stressor, because we all meet stress in our lives, yeah. you find new and better ways to deal with the stressors at hand. Cool. And this happy, healthy life uh, and, and go, go life hacking uh, uh, for living for the rest of your life. Awesome, man. Um, is there anything that you use may maybe as lifestyle hacks, healing hacks, things that, um, you know, are just as simple as you're talking? Really, the idea is that they're natural uh, things that people can do like anytime, anywhere to just feel better. Breathe consciously. <laughs> yeah. I mean, really. Stating out the obvious. Yeah. Well, you know what I wanted to say is, is really the Wim Hof practitioners or people who are teaching breath work are really on the front lines of the health revolution, I should say, because yeah. what we're finding out is these uh, frequencies that we're being exposed to now are actually preventing oxygen uptake in the cells. Mm. So um, as we teach people to breathe, I think that's why this is kind of taking off is like people need more oxygen. So like you said, uh, for me, it was a game changer, breathing, connection with nature. Um, this has been awesome. Um, we're at the bottom of the hour. Is there any last uh, maybe inspirational things, mindset tips before we disconnect here? Um, yeah, well, then, then, then you, you get to the take home message. It's like, um, yeah, go out there. It's, it's make things less complicated. Yeah. Um, we are overcomplicating almost everything in our life, which leads to this, this huge amount of limiting beliefs in your head. Um, and you can read a lot of books about it. And that's interesting. But yeah. just go there. Go out there. Go outside of your comfort zone. Be open to experiencing new things. Go jump out of an airplane uh, wearing a parachute. Go yeah. Face your fears. And, and go look what's on the other side of that fear because you can learn a lot there. And, and that's mindset. Let, let go of the limiting beliefs here. Be open, connect with yourself, with people outside and, and you know, with nature outside and just be, be happy and, and live now. Take a cold shower. Right? Take, take a cold shower, why not? Yeah. <laughs> All right, awesome, Bart. It has been real and thank you so much for being here. Um, and yeah. Uh, anybody, how can they get connected with you? Um, well, um, it's, it's really easy. You can Google me. and um, uh, I, I have this site. I'm on social media, uh, Instagram, Facebook. Um, my cell phone number is even out there. So if, and that's also to me important that I want to be, uh, uh, people can, so I want to be available. People can reach me for questions, guidance, whatever. Um, so just Google me and, and my, name, my name will pop up and, uh, and if I can help, I can help. Awesome. Yeah. Appreciate it. Cool.